make sure we're live here and we've got sound looks like we're live Let's see if I have sound yep awesome <laughs> Okay. Hi, everybody. How are we doing today? It is a gorgeous spring day here in Wyoming. It's kind of teasing us because this time of year, we still sometimes get a huge dump of snow, which is great for all of the, the plants and the grass and everything. But man, we're loving this, this weather and we're hankering to go camping. So what are you up to today? Are you having a great day? Let me know in the comment box if you're watching and where you're from. I'd love to know where you're from. It's always fun to see where everybody's from all around the United States and even the world sometimes. So make sure you leave a comment, say hi in the box, and then we're going to talk about how to do hand binding today. So I'm going to show you my five top five tips on hand binding and it's going to be so much fun. So I'm going to wait just a second, make sure everything is working and everybody's on here. Boy, so I'm using a, a different camera today than the computer's camera. There's just a tiny bit of a lag in my voice. So if it's showing up like that for you too, I'm sorry about that. But uh, all right, so my tip number one. So actually, let me back up. Um, I learned how to hand bind um, a couple years ago, actually. I used to just do binding by machine, and that was it. And um, it's so fast to do binding by machine. Um, doing it by hand takes a little bit more practice, a little bit more patience, and a lot more time. Definitely a lot more time. But it is a great way to finish your quilts. And if you love just hanging out on the couch in the evenings like I do, watching your favorite show and hanging with your hubby or your friends or your kids, this is a great thing to keep your hands busy so you're not eating a whole bag of popcorn all by yourself. Because I can do that. Or two. <laughs> so, uh, let's dive in. So, my first um, tip is to put your binding on just like you would if you're going to do it by machine. But let me switch the camera view here real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this quilt, you'll recognize it. This is the one we did for the log cabin quilt class just a couple weeks ago. And so when I put the binding on this guy, I put it on the back first. And then I flipped it over to the front and then um, top stitched it down. So on the back, you can see there is a line running um, where I sewed it down, which is fine. Um, it's not a professional finish, but it is a sturdy finish because um, it's hand or it's machine sewn, so there's nothing gonna catch for kids to use this. Um, we'll probably use it on the couch, so it's very handy. And let me kind of zoom you in here, see if you can see it a little better. Oh, bother this stupid camera! It likes to freeze up all on me. Okay switching things around and of course it zoomed this camera in too. <laughs> okay guys, come on. All right, this one's working. Now let's get this one to work. All right, there we go. <laughs> Let me hook my microphone back up. It fell off of me. Oh my goodness. Okay, so here you can see that I just top stitched that down and so you can see that top stitch on the back as well. So like I said, it makes it really sturdy. So if you're uh, making your quilt for maybe a baby or a graduation present or something like that, that's gonna take a lot of abuse and they're gonna use it heavily, I would still do the machine binding. So that's what I did on this one. But this one here is almost a vintage, vintage quilt. And um, it's funny to say that because it's about the same age that I am. <laughs> So um, this quilt was made about 30 to 35-ish years ago, and uh, it never got finished. It needed a border put on it. So my client, um, just by chance, we ran into each other, and um, I was actually buying something from her off of Facebook Marketplace and said, I'm going to use this to um, help store some of my quilting projects. And she's like, oh, you quilt? awesome. I have a quilt for you to finish. 
So here it is, and um, I added this border to it and then long armed it, and now we're putting the binding on. So I matched the border and the binding fabric so they're exactly the same, so you won't even see it. You'll just see this beautiful border. Um, and then you put this binding on the top instead of the back like I did the other one. That way when you flip it over, and let me find the spot where I left off here. I've started it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And this pattern is the wedding ring pattern. I think it's a double wedding ring. Nope. Yep. Double wedding ring pattern. Here it is. Sorry. Okay. It's a queen size quilt, so it's pretty big. But here you can see I flipped the binding over to attach it to the back. And when I hand sew that down, it doesn't take away from the beautiful long arming design. Um, you won't have this line of your top stitch through the back of the quilt. So um, it just gives it that even more professional, beautiful finish. So tip number one was sewing your binding on the top. Okay, that way you can flip it over to the back. Uh, tip number two is the needle, and I love using Milner's needle size 11, 10 or 11. They're a straw needle, very, very thin. Um, I don't know if you can even see that in the camera, but it's super, super thin and very long. Um, it's a little bit flexible, so at, um, over time you'll see that these needles will have a little bit of a curve to them after you've been using them and that's perfectly normal that's exactly what you want because if you have too hard of a needle it um, will cause even more pain in your fingers and your wrists as you're trying to push those through you want something that's going to be a little bit more flexible so Milner's size 10 or 11 and um, we should have a link to the Amazon um, store for this in our shop. So if you just go to journeybackquilts.com, click store, and then scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see all of our affiliate links for Amazon, and we do get a small commission from that sale. So anything that we don't carry in our store directly, we'll have a link for that in our Amazon store. So that's tip number two. Tip number three is the right kind of thread. So if you have been watching me a while, you'll not be surprised that this is my favorite thread. <laughs> so I'm using Orofil and it's a dark blue thread that will blend in with the binding colored fabric. Um, you possibly could get away with using the same as the backing, but I usually tend to use the same colored thread as my binding. That way it really blends in really well. Um, I do double this, so I'll take about a quilter's yard, which is just holding it with one hand and then stretching it out so that you get about a yard. Doesn't have to be perfect. And then we'll need this little baby. Now these needles do have a teeny tiny little eye, so you might need to use a needle threader to help you. I can usually pop it in there pretty well. Okay, and so then I double the thread like this and so that brings me to tip number four which is the knot so i use a quilter's knot which is when you have this doubled over like that you just moisten your finger or if you have some lotion or maybe you have sweaty hands um, anything to cause a little bit of moisture just so that when you roll it between your fingers like this it will cause it to knot up okay and there's my lovely knot. I'm not sure if you can see that in the video very well. Um, so let me do that again. So I roll it around my finger with my thumb on my pointer, and then I'm gonna roll it on my hand, holding this taut, and then roll it right off, and then take my middle finger and my thumb and pull that knot through until it makes a knot tight there, okay? And so now that I have two, I'm gonna clip that further furthest one off and now my needle and thread are ready to go so now I'm going to put it in my layer of binding going the wrong direction so I'm going to put it in this way and then bring it right out that fold 
as close to the edge as possible. Okay. I'm usually doing this on the couch, so doing it at my table is a little more awkward for my hands. All right, there we go. And then you can either use Wonder Clips or just um, push it down as you go. So I just tend to work at it as I go, trying to get it to be straight this way. You don't want your binding to run this way or this way. And so that's actually another tip is that um, I cut my binding strips um, from selvage to selvage instead of going on the bias. Um, when you go through doing it on the bias, um, you get a very long strip of binding without having to make a seam and that's really awesome. But it gives you some wiggle room and um, can stretch. So when I'm pulling this over, it could make a wrinkle because I might be pulling it over incorrectly, if that makes sense. Um, so if you're going to be making um, scalloped edges, then you'll definitely want to use a biased cut for your binding. But for this, I just use selvage to selvage. So I'm going to um, fold that over just to my seam mark of where I attached my binding on the top. So it just folds right over there. And then you're going to take teeny tiny little stitches. So about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. But I tend to go eighth. And you're just going to take a little tiny stitch in that, um, that fold of your binding and a little tiny stitch just in the backing of your fabric, just right below where you put the stitch on the binding. Let me see if I can zoom you any more in and hopefully it doesn't freeze up on us. There we go, now you can see it really, really well. Okay, so my last stitch was in the backing of the fabric, so I'm just going to take a little tiny chunk, putting my needle through the fold of my binding, and then pulling that tight. And I will kind of give it a little bit of a tug as I go just to keep that thread tight, and then fold the next section down. And my next stitch is going to go right underneath where I just did a stitch on the binding, but in the backing fabric and then pull that tight and you just keep doing that forever and ever and ever. Now there are some tips and tricks that I have for doing your mitered corners as well, but we're not going to get into that today. Um, this video and others will be on our membership page. If you are interested in learning more about binding either by hand or by machine, um, this month we're talking all about binding, basting, and squaring our quilts. So if those are trouble areas for you, I would encourage you to join us in our online membership. So this membership has a library full of online videos for you to help walk you through anything that you're struggling with in your quilting journey. And other fun things to help you learn how to do other fun quilting stuff. So we're constantly trying to add more videos to our membership to help everyone out who has a problem. So you can pick and choose which videos you need to watch, almost like YouTube, but it's easier and more convenient because you don't have to go searching through a million different YouTube videos to find a technique that you like. So if you like the way that I teach and the way that I do my quilting techniques, I would encourage you to check it out. And there's a link in the description box that will take you to our membership page that you can read more and learn how much it is and all that kind of stuff. But we're having lots of fun. Also, our Farm Girl Vintage class is open for registration this month. So that class walks you through all of the blocks that Lori Holt made in her first Farm Girl Vintage book. It is so much fun to put together. I just recently hung it up in my studio downstairs. So if you missed that, go check out my long arming video and you can see that Farm Girl Vintage quilt in there. It is so cute. I love how it's brightened up that room. 
So yeah, you just keep going like this over and over and over and over again. It can be so relaxing and so much fun. And before you know it, you'll be done. But it does take longer than machine binding for sure. All right, if you guys have any questions while I'm doing these kind of videos, I would love to hear what you're working on or struggling with or um, just hear from you. I love chatting with other quilters about our quilting journeys and uh, we can help each other and learn from each other because you probably have a whole bunch of fun techniques that I don't know and I would love to learn from you as well. All right, let me see if we have any comments or questions. Nope, looking good. Okay, I must be describing it well enough. <laughs> Just little tiny chunks at a time. So when I run out of thread, when I get close to my needle and I need to tie a knot, then I'll do um, a knot, I'll just show you here real quick. Um, I'll take a chunk from the, the backing of the fabric and pull that through so that my top binding is laying flat. Kind of pull that over here. Okay, and then I'll just stick my needle right back in that same spot and go through the same exit point that I just had or as close as possible. And I'll make a little loop and then go through that loop two times with my needle and pull that tight and that will make a little knot and then tuck that thread tail in underneath the binding where it will be hidden just like that and then clip it and voila all done and then when you do your next stitch when you put your thread back in you'll just bring it back out that uh, binding right there where you left off and re-stitch over that spot and it will hide it perfectly so you won't even see it. All right, so that's how you do binding by hand. Let me switch the camera. Oh, wow, we're really, really close. Back you up there, baby. Here we go. It's like we're dancing. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining me today. I hope that you'll go check out the membership page. Follow this link that's in the description box and it will take you to that membership page where you can read more about what is included in the membership. And it's so much fun. We've been having a blast together. So I hope that you'll join us. And next week, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite products and how to use it. So we'll see you soon.